Hello, everybody. Happy Monday morning, May 3rd. It's your boy, Dave Neal, stand up comedian. And here we've got an update on the Cassie Randolph. Uh, I feel like this is a soap opera by this point. The wonderful world of Cassie Randolph. She's, um, she's moved on, which is great. She moved on from her life. She was with uh, her former uh, Bachelor star, Colton Underwood, just came out of the closet several weeks ago. Of course, she had a restraining order, a temporary restraining order against him for stalking and harassing her. Let's get into it. Let's get into how Brighton Reinhardt fits into all this. Us Weekly has a new article that says, Cassie Randolph's new beau, Brighton Reinhardt, has supported her through Colton Underwood drama. So we'll read a little bit about this. And then I'll play for you the lyrics from his song Creep, which of course is about Colton Underwood. There are many references to him putting a tracking device on her car and whatnot. Now, what we know in hindsight about um, text messages Colton was sending to Cassie, accusing her of being with Brighton, you know, they could have just been friends. Absolutely. They could have just been friends. And even if they weren't, it doesn't give him the right to follow her. It's still illegal. Believe it or not, if you accuse your ex-girlfriend of seeing a new guy, even if you can track them and find out where they are, it's still illegal. So this story came out on Saturday on my birthday. And let me tell you something. I wasn't about to make content this weekend. I've got a lime tree in my front yard and a bottle of tequila. Two shots in. When you're turning 36, you don't... Uh, you just don't you just don't drink like you used to. I'll tell you what. I've been hung over for uh, three weeks just thinking about that day. All right, and thank you guys so much for all the nice comments and uh, birthday support. Uh, more than friends, Cassie Randolph's relationship with musician Brighton Reinhardt progressed naturally after her split from Colton Underwood. A source tells Us Weekly. He's been a good friend of hers for over five years. He obviously knows what she went through with Colton and just supported her along the way. Now let me ask you guys a question. Uh, you know, ladies and gentlemen, please. Let me know in the comments section. Can you be friends with someone platonically for five years and then start dating? You know, Tasha, my fiance and myself were friends before we started dating. And I have to tell you, we really built a good friendship first. Um, I don't always think that's the case. I don't always think that would work. But I think it can be nice if the family likes you. You know, maybe you're seeing someone else and things don't line up. And then all of a sudden, boom, you're in the right place, right time. Let's jump ahead real quick. As we saw... Um, Cassie posted this vlog uh, just several days ago, and in the uh, subtitles it says, little did I know how unintentionally well-timed this vacation would be. Of course, this vacation she's, she's speaking about is a literal trip to Mexico like the day after Colton came out of the closet. Um, I actually assumed that when Colton came out of the closet and she felt blindsided, of course there's a lot of trauma associated with all of this. Uh, uh, on one hand, we can be happy for Colton Underwood, but on the other hand, Cassie's probably hasn't had... I'm just assuming much closure with her situation as there's been no no public apology for this specific. Sure, he said, I'm sorry for all that I did, but, you know, a lot of people still didn't like Cassie and thought she let him on and this and a lot of victim blaming has happened in our nation. I feel like victim blaming is a low IQ thing. I think it's what you do when you don't want to critically think about a situation. You just go, well, so-and-so shouldn't have been wearing that dress. Well, so-and-so was leading him on. She should have known better. Oh, she shouldn't be talking about politics. <laughs> you know, I don't know. I think it's a low IQ thing to not be like, oh, okay, maybe they're more, maybe people are more evolved than we give them credit to be. You know what I mean? But anyway, I digress on that note. So we go back to the Us Weekly article here. She's uh, she's 26, joined by her new flame, 24, on her recent trip to Mexico, which she uh, documented in a YouTube vlog. Of course, I just showed you that little clip. He gets along very well with my family. Right now, with her family right now, they're still enjoying spending time with one another and just seeing where things go. There it is. Boy, you know, you can't hate on a musician. They just got the weirdest look. His hair is growing like some sort of mushroom out of the side of a hill. I don't know. Whatever. What can you do? What's going on with the shirt here? Los Angeles. He's got a nice, I don't know, he's got the nice little uh, a white vest on. He looks like a caterer who, uh, who also works, um, you know, uh, you know, at directing traffic or uh, escaped convict. I don't know, folks. I don't write jokes here. I just comment. I'm a little slow this morning getting going. It's the tequila talking. So she's the, um, so she, uh, you know, this, this goes into how she met uh, uh, Colton Underwood. And then earlier this year, whoever, um, Reinhardt Brighton, let's go, let's just do, can we just do, when it comes to celebrity gossip, can we just do first names? So I don't have to like wonder what, you know, Reinhardt seemingly took aim at Underwood in his song Creep, which debuted in January. Lyrics in the first verse read, 
You can't stop thinking about my baby. What once was yours in the world is changing. God, I hope you get your thinking right. GPS on the underside. Told her everything would be just fine. Damn, I can't believe these guys. I'll play it in a little bit. I know, my, my voice stinks. I know, it's a professional microphone and I still can't get... Don't worry about me, folks. I'm not trying to get Cassie Randall. Luckily, I got some other uh, skills uh, up my sleeve, if you will. <laughs> and one of them ain't vocals. Uh, the single dropped two months after Randolph dropped the restraining order she had filed against a former NFL player in September after claiming that he was stalking and harassing her. At the time, Underwood denied the accusations. Things between the exes took a turn once again in April when Underwood came out as gay during an interview. Uh, I'm the happiest and healthiest I've ever been in my life. That means the world to me, he told Robin Roberts. Not really a mention of the collateral damage that he caused uh, being in her alleyway at 3 a.m. I do get a couple of random comments saying, leave them alone. They're going to be, listen, they're going to be fine whether I leave them alone or not. We're just going to follow the story. We're invested in this storyline. We're invested in it for victims of domestic violence. We're invested in it for people that um, might uh, uh, do something crazy or seemingly so that gets them into a place where they create the collateral damage that makes a victim. No one wakes up and says, I'm going to commit domestic violence today. These are people with uh, rage issues, with uh, abandonment issues. I mean, issue after issue. I'm not a psychologist. I'm not here to diagnose him. But clearly, it's a painful thing, and we want everyone to release the burdens of that pain. I mean, I think at the very least, I would like that for everybody. I'm sorry for any pain and emotional stress I caused. I wish that I wouldn't that it wouldn't have happened that way the way that it did. I wish that I had been courageous enough to fix myself before I broke anybody else. This is a good start. This would be a great start to like a hour long conversation. Unfortunately, that's all he mentions about it. I think I think that would be a great start. You know, you wish you fixed yourself before you broke anybody else. That'd be a good uh, lyric for the song. He wish he... Okay, I'm not going to get... <laughs> wow. Uh, maybe they could collaborate. I don't know. Shortly after the interview aired, a source told us exclusively that Randolph was not made aware that her ex-boyfriend would be sharing his story on national TV, which, you know, some say, oh, it's his story to tell. Absolutely. But she was tied into this when he put a tracking device under the trunk of her car. And that's the photo of it, folks. A lot of people, even though I've shared these photos for a long time, they're all public knowledge. You can look at all the... The, you know, the photos, the screen grabs from the court documents. This is Colton V. Underwood right here. See, or I'm sorry, Rant Colton. <laughs> I feel like I've made that mistake before. This is Colton versus Underwood. It's just a real battle with the self. You ever have a, you ever have a fight with yourself? Dave versus Neil, uh, 2021. Uh, my birthday. It's my liver versus my tequila shot. Uh, we're hanging in there, folks. Buy a thread. Uh, you like, uh, like an H&M thread, not even a strong thread. You know what I mean? Just the type of thread that'll bust when you wash it once. Looking at you, $7 shirts, 100% cotton my ass. Uh, so uh, so this is a text message that C Colton sent. So he knew about Brighton all along. Now, it doesn't make what he did right, but he knew Brighton was a threat. Yeah, You, you know what I love is, um, let me just, you versus the guy she said don't worry about. You, you ever see this meme before? Let me get, let me go to images right here. It's really the, fu these are the funniest memes ever. So it's always like, um, it's, uh, where's, where's a good one here? Oh, the, uh, these are garbage. I guess this is a good one. Open link a new tab here. Let's see if we can find this. You versus the guy she tells you not to worry about. It's always just like, you know what I mean? Anyway, so I'm sure she's like, Brian, she's my friend. Don't worry about him. He's like, you know, but at that point, Colton wasn't with Cassie anymore. So she shouldn't have to defend so-and-so was my friend. Like, she shouldn't have to do that. It's kind of like, we're not together anymore. I will do with my life what I please. I couldn't possibly know what caused him to want to put a tracking device under the hood of her car. But I will tell you, after looking at these text messages that he sent to her from an anonymous number, you get to see an obsessiveness where he wanted to like catch her being with Brighton. It was almost like as a detective ex-boyfriend, he was like, if I can prove she's with Brighton, you know, whatever, maybe I can move on with my life. I can't know what he was thinking. It doesn't make it right. It's almost like by not having the trust, by wondering what might happen, just by Googling tracking device types, you'd think that should be enough for you to want to move on. You know, if you, let me tell you guys something. If you ever break up with your ex and you start going on Amazon, seeing which tracking device would be the best one to use on your ex, let that be the, like, I just, please, just shuffle Amazon, shuffle them to my videos. Stop. Don't do that. Move on. You've gone too far. This is what he texted her from the unknown number. You like playing games, huh? 
Let's play some games then. Let's just say we used to be family friends. Be young. Have your good time. You'll have nothing but regrets later with how you treat people. Totally seems like you're growing up. LOLs. Living at home still. Whoa. Was not not the... Oh, and then in addition, when Miss Randolph was at her ex-friend's home, whom she calls B... I'm sorry. Not ex. In addition, when Miss Randolph was at her friend's home, whom she calls B, Brighton... Correct me if I'm wrong. I believe that means Brighton. She received the message, say hi to B for me, kiss face emoji. So that was Colton's stalker way of saying, I know where you are, which is something you would see in a horror film. If this ended with with a horrific ending, you know what I mean? Like a loss of life, you'd be looking at these messages going, what an absolute crazy situation and I think we still feel that way but I think she's got family with that no great boundaries they took care of her and I honestly think there is a scenario in which these court documents and this restraining order saves this man's life I mean and again you don't want to see Cassie as collateral damage but there's absolutely a scenario in which this became the low that convinced him to address his identity and in all that jazz so um, here's, let's just play this from the 11 minute mark. I'll play three quick clips. Th- these are the lyrics. This, um, uh, this video I made came out January 9th. And these are a few of the lyrics from Brighton. You can, uh, cl- you can watch his f- full video if you want, but this is the song he made when he was apparently still just friends with Cassie, with Cassie. but they could have just been, you know, this would be on the timeline where, you know, she was obviously confiding in him. He knew all the secrets to their, their restraining order before she even filed it. August 27th, 2020. So on August 27th, 2020, there were these rumors that Brighton was dating Cassie. He denied it. But what we find out here in his Instagram stories, and by the way, like I said, 9-11 was the first day that TMZ broke the news about the temporary restraining order. So uh, there was already rumors before the restraining order that Cassie was dating Brighton. She's allowed to. She dumped. She broke up with Colton in April. So be it. You know, live your life. But let's go to his um, Instagram story to see what he posted today, or he must he posted this yesterday. So let's see. This is how the creep song all started. He said. So this is. You'll see the timestamp is August twenty second, twenty twenty. So he wrote this song, or at least started the beats and all the rhythms for this song. Weeks before the news broke about the temporary restraining order. And so you can watch that part. You know, That's just, that was just a rhythm that he made for the song Creep. So clearly this song was like he had it in the chamber. And we don't know why it took him so long to release it. You know, songs obviously can, can take a little while to produce. Or he needed some legal reasons, court documents, restraining order ending. Either way, this song came out once, once the restraining order is over. But it begs the question, did Cassie Ren enough approve of this? Not dating. I mean, there's like things happening in here. Um, you can't stop thinking about my baby. What once was yours in the world is changing. God, I hope you get your thinking right. GPS on the underside. I mean, there's literally no other scenario where this is somebody that's not Colton. So I think we can all agree. This is um, Colton right here. Public opinion. I mean, I'll tell you what. I have two feelings towards this. And I can separate my feelings. I think it's a good song. I actually think it's a good song. You're a creep. You can't stop. I stand by that. I think it's a good song. You can watch this whole video here. Let me just play the 18 minute mark. And um, yeah, I mean, this guy Brighton went hard on Colton. He went hard on Colton, not hard, hard on Colton in the sense that, look, I mean, he's clowning him with the, uh, the cover art. This was the one, like a, the same outfit he was wearing on the bachelor. I mean, clearly, clearly this song was about Colton and um, in hindsight, I mean, it's, it's it's devastating for all involved. Colton created a scenario that was impossible for Cassie, and then and then the guy that Colton was accusing Cassie of being with writes this song that just cuts, just making fun of the fact that like we caught your bra, you put a GPS on her underside, you're a creep, and then the whole song's just like kids holding it. We can't stop thinking about your baby. All right, let's play this last clip. But one more time, I I missed the beginning there. I know you think that she's the one. Put a tracker in her whip just to watch her pump the brakes. All right, that's it, guys. That's the. So yeah, so that's what we know about uh, about Brighton. We'll see what happens with their relationship. Wishing them well. Wishing them well. Let's see if there's any other uh, 
uh, videos I missed. We got the one with Cassie over there in Mexico. The best thing you can do if you want to support Cassie right now is just follow her YouTube, leave her nice comments, and support her, you know, the, the, the content she makes. You know, who knows? I mean, there might be a world in which she decides to tell her story. You know, when it comes to uh, sort of um, wrapping your head around what happened to your life, there can be there can be months that go by where you know you're dealing with something and then one day you wake up you know the sun hits you the right way you have that right colombian coffee and you're like you know what i think today we're going to talk i don't think there's any sort of gag order um, i don't think there's any sort of agreement not to talk i know cassie had mentioned there's a lot of layers involved to it i think what that means is like look I'm not just going to make a statement until I can make a full statement, until I can talk about things, how, how it all went down. And again, there's, there's, just, there's, there's no world in which it's right to stalk somebody, um, especially after you've broken up. And um, you know, if he didn't get the closure he needed, that's a, con- that's a different conversation. But sometimes when you don't get the right closure that you want, you feel like you didn't get closure. But I think all, we can all put together that that closure came when they broke up. Um, or at least should have come when they broke up. Hey, here's a photo of me on my 36th birthday, folks. I got a nice photo here. Uh, my friend Katie wrote, happy birthday. Thanks for all the laughs. Hold on, I have some dirt on my shoulder. Let me brush that off. That's an old school reference. Someone said, someone gave me the best compliment here. I don't know if I'm going to be able to find it. Oh, you know what I mean? You're going to have to go through there. Someone said, nice hair. And I, <laughs> of all the compliments I got, I was like, oh, I got a nice hair compliment. That's kind of, the older you get, the more you just want someone to compliment your hair. <laughs> so go out there and compliment your hair. Dave's been dumping doubloons with a nice cow lick. What are you going to do? Um, I think that's, uh, I think that's it for this video. Um, I kind of feel like I took like a year off from making content because I took two days off, but, um, we're going to be getting back into it, folks. we got a lot of content coming today, a 4 p.m. live stream. And don't forget, if you haven't already, sign up for my mailing list. I know I've been promising that, I was gonna, that I've been, I'm was that i going to send out a newsletter. It's going to become a weekly or bi-weekly thing, and it's going to be access that I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you guys things that I haven't given uh, the audience on YouTube. So if you join my mailing list, I my next... Uh, my next newsletter I'm going to send out tomorrow morning. I'm promising you this tomorrow morning. This is a promise. I'm going to send out a photo of the cake that I made. I made a giant needle cake for um, the vaccine. I made a giant vaccine cake. I made it. I handmade it with these very specific um, little cake tins and it's very long and it's got a little point and it's got a little plunger on one end. So I will send the photo of that out on my newsletter. There'll be a link in the comment. Uh, I know Hundreds, if not thousands of you have signed up. It's going to be important for me to build my newsletter because God knows whatever happens to YouTube or, or you know, the best way to promote stand updates and uh, tours and bachelor events and this and that will be through personal emails. So sign up for that. There's no catch, no cost, none of that. You just put your name, your, you capture it. You say, you, you do that little quiz to see where the fire hydrants are. I don't know why they make you do that. And then, um, and then you just put your email and then you're signed up. And uh, so there'll be a link in the description in uh, all my videos for that. And, um, and anyway, just be nice out there. Don't be a creep. And, um, I will see you guys uh, later on live stream 4 PM. Bye now.